Hello, my name is Maria Jalikar. Welcome to my show, Let's Talk About History. Today I have a guest, Dale Plummer, Norwich's historian. Dale, hello Dale. Thank Hi. you for joining me today. Sure, thank you for inviting me. It's mm -hmm. always a pleasure. Thank you. So now, um, I guess there's an update on the Reed and Hughes building. Well, Can yes. Can you talk about that? Sure, I'll just uh, briefly. Uh, the Women's Institute um, out of Hartford has signed an agreement with the city uh, where they will start stabilizing the building, I think by the end of the month, actually. So within a few weeks, we should see, well, we'll see a lot on the outside, but on the inside, they will be shoring the building up, starting from the bottom uh, up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, stabilizing it, putting a roof over the portion where it collapsed so that they can then uh, move forward on putting a financing package together that will enable them to do a six million dollar uh, renovation of the building. It will be a great, great thing. So it's a go. Starting it is a go. A couple of weeks in May. Yes, that's right. Uh, probably beginning of May. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's good to see, I think... We'll start seeing work done on the Reading News Building. That's right. That's good. You know, I'm pleased that the council voted uh, affirmatively for the agreement. I think it was a unanimous vote. Uh, all of the seven uh, council members, including the mayor, uh, voted to uh, proceed. So it's a good thing to see after so many years of controversy and so on, uh, progress is being made. Uh, Definitely. Well, congratulations. Well, we've worked, so a lot of people have worked work. hard on it, yes. Uh -huh. yep. It's finally going to, your dreams going to become a realization, having the Reed and Hughes building become apartments for veterans. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, retail on the first floor. And personally, it's of interest to me because my great-grandfather moved to Norwich in 1885 to mm. work for Reed and Hughes. Mm -hmm. He came from Scotland and oh Adam Reed of yeah. Reed and Hughes was from Scotland also. Mm. So apparently they knew each other in the old country mm -hmm. and Reed invited uh, my great-grandfather to come, uh, come over. Mm -hmm. So now if there are veterans interested in wanting to rent an apartment there how will they go about um, putting their name in for a future occupancy? Well, I think it, it's probably premature to do that mm. just yet, but the, I think what will happen will be the Women's Institute will ultimately create a, a, a different entity, a different uh, outfit that they will be involved in that will actually manage it mm -hmm. and so on. So. But certainly it wouldn't hurt to contact the Women's Institute and express one's interest. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and of course we Do have... Do you know how anyone would go about doing that? Well, they're on the, they're on the internet. Oh, uh, they are? Yeah. Women's Institute. Yes. Okay. Women's Institute for Housing and Economic mm -hmm. Development. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very competent. They've done some great work, mm -hmm. including veterans housing in uh, Jewett City, uh, Newington. They built new housing there. And uh, the advantage I think we have is that John Salomon, our city manager, was the manager in Newington and worked with the Women's Institute there. So he's already familiar with them and with the quality of work they do, mm -hmm. which is a, a big plus. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, uh, there's the uh, 100th anniversary of World War One. Yes. This year. Um, what meeting are you supposed to be going to at the city council? Are you involved in um, yes. memory of World War I, the 100th anniversary? Yes, the mayor has, uh, um, is putting together a committee that I believe I will head, which will be in charge of both 
a celebration or a, perhaps a commemoration would be better to say, um, sort of an acknowledgement of those who served in World War I mm -hmm. on Veterans Day, which as you know um, was called Armistice Day because that was the day the, the armistice uh, happened. Um, so on Armistice Day or Veterans Day, November 11th, there should be a big um, affair event here which this committee will be charged with. We're hoping to contact um, the descendants of those people who, who served in the war. Mm. And in fact, there were at least 1,400, probably as many as 1,800 people from Norwich that served in My World War I. My grandfather did. Yes. He has a plaque at his gravesite. Yes. Henry, Henry Jalliker. Yeah. I think I've seen his name. Actually, yeah, I didn't know okay. that was your yeah. grandfather. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yes. So maybe you can send me a... We'll send you some information. Yeah, yes. that'd be nice. I'd really like that. And along with that is charged the um, uh, raising money to restore the World War I cannon, which used to stand on the parade. Mm. So there, there are actually there are several things that your, your uh, audience could... Um, could do mm -hmm. that would be of help. Okay. Uh, one of them is that um, the Connecticut State Library mm -hmm. on June 23rd, it's a Saturday, from 10.30 to 2.30 is going to be doing a digitization project. Mm -hmm. So they will come in and digitize uh, photographs that people have, uh, possibly documents like letters, um, from World War I. Mm -hmm. And um, it's open to anyone in the community or the area that has anything from World War I. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to get my brother to dig out our family World War I mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. which he has. Yeah, what state would you, it would be, your, your uh, grandfather would be from Connecticut? Well, no, actually he came to Connecticut from Maine. Oh, okay, so he, uh, he would have been in Maine when he, he served in World War I. Well, he enlisted, I think. I'm not even sure if he enlisted in Maine. Oh. That's, um, he came down here and mm -hmm. enlisted in the Navy and the submarines. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how we got in Connecticut, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. at least that branch of the family. I have a question for you, um, backing up about the subject about reading news. Are the prices going to be fair, the um, payments, monthly payments, the rent? Is it going to be more fair than regular rents? For the I, veterans, I think they will have a, a you know a formula where you know depending on income and so forth. Uh, usually, the way this works is they would they would use um, affordable housing tax credits, mm -hmm. which would mean that um, for various in there would be a certain number of units set aside for you know one income level versus mm -hmm. another. Oh. There will be a range so. Mm -hmm. There should be apartments available for uh, you know a wide range mm -hmm. of income. And how many apartments are going to be available? Be twenty. Twenty, which is a pretty That's good nice. number. Yeah. You know. Very nice. Uh, and you know downtown there'll be near veteran services, the mm -hmm. post office, the library, the mm -hmm. city hall, a number of restaurants. So it will be very convenient for them. You know, and it's good we that we should have a ramp. Um, it will be handicapped ramp. accessible. Yeah. 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 No, and I think it's, it's, it's fitting, too, especially since we're now remembering World War I veterans who are all gone. They've all passed away. Mm -hmm. There are none living. Mm -hmm. um, that we should honor, you know, the veterans of later, later wars and, and seek to mm -hmm. help take care of them. Okay. You know, the disabled American veterans came out of World War I. Mm -hmm. um, American Legion, veterans of foreign wars, were all founded yeah. by veterans who had served in World War I. But I would urge anyone who has uh, family uh, memorabilia related mm -hmm. to the war to come to Otis Library on June 23rd, between 10.30 mm -hmm. a.m. and 2.30. Um, so that's, that's exciting. So they're gonna be digitizing for a, a pamphlet also, right? A booklet. With well, that may be that at some point that comes out of it, but mm. at this point they're simply trying to preserve these things before they're lost. Mm. You know, the um, there's also a movie coming out uh, this weekend. It uh, premieres, I think, on uh, April 23rd. 
um, Sergeant Stubby. Oh. It's an animated film about oh. a homeless dog from New Haven oh. who became the mascot of the 102nd uh, Regiment, mm. which was mostly made up of men from Connecticut. Uh, they serve. It's a true story. It's a true story. Oh, it's nice. animated, but the story is all true. Mm. And this little dog became their their. So uh, children mascot. will enjoy seeing it also. Be great for children yes. and adults. Yeah. I'm planning to see it myself. Yes, nice. <laughs> um, so there's a lot going on around the First World War, mm -hmm. as is uh, appropriate. Mm -hmm. And also another thing that people can help with is that. We're looking for information about the cannon. Mm -hmm. There was a cannon at the end of the parade, a World War I cannon, that um, unfortunately deteriorated and was removed and put in, in storage, which we're now seeking to restore. But we need, if people have photographs showing that cannon, it was first put up in 1926. We found some from 10 years later, but we'd like to see if we can find some original photographs of, of the, uh, the cannon mm -hmm. uh, so that people can, uh, so that in restoring it, we have some guideline as to, you know, what its mm -hmm. actual appearance okay. was. So when is this meeting at City Hall? We'll is anyone welcome to oh, attend? Yes. People that are interested in World War I. Yes, and Norwich history in general. Mm -hmm. The meeting is going to be an informational meeting, I believe at 7 o'clock. This Monday. This Monday, mm -hmm. which would be the um, 16th, 16th of April. Okay. Uh, Are they going to have any other meetings regarding? The well, we'll have regular committee meetings and reports to the council. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be... Have anyone to contact you yes. um, regarding this subject, World War One, or any subject regarding Norwich history, and if if they want to donate, yes, how can they contact you? Um, well, you they, have an email. I address, have an email. I which have, is? <laughs> I have two emails. My official email is City Historian, mm -hmm. all in lowercase, at um, NorwichCT.org mm -hmm. or Plummerdale, P L U M M E R D A L E, mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. um, so either of those addresses will work. Uh, and then my phone number is 860 949 five seven eight four okay and so they can certainly call me and um, you know we're interested in, in finding you know whatever information we can about those and who this served. also includes for the Norwich Heritage Trust um, well if they want to contact me regarding historic preservation certainly mm -hmm. yes. yes do you have any we, other houses that are in your view that you would like to have um, help uh, being finished and well we've been working with the uh, the uh, nonprofit that uh, owns the uh, Buckingham Memorial oh, yes. which is the United yeah. War Veterans Grand Army of the Republic Buckingham Memorial Association Civil War Civil War mm -hmm. Governor Buckingham mm -hmm. a very important figure that's where your office is that's where my office mm -hmm. is and I'm actually on the board of that of that uh, organization now too um, but we're concerned about you know buildings all over in districts all over Norwich mm -hmm. I think one of the problems in the last 10 or 15 years is with the economy so poor mm -hmm. people haven't invested money in fixing up their buildings so we mm -hmm. have a lot of buildings that are in disrepair mm -hmm. uh, the Norwich Historical Society is going to be having a um, program in June for homeowners to discuss um, state tax credits for rehabilitation of your home. So that should be very good and, and you know there'll be more information about that coming out soon. Um, you know there's there's really Norwich is one of the richest cities in the state of Connecticut in terms of its historic buildings and one architecture. One of the oldest cities. 
certainly one of the oldest, and you know, we were spared the kind of really massive destruction that places like New London uh, went through. Mm -hmm. we, didn't have, we didn't have as bad a case of urban renewal as mm -hmm. they did. We still lost a lot of buildings, but we had so many more to begin with. You know, speaking of houses, um, old houses, how can people get a preservation plaque, something that states it's a historic home? Well, if their house is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, mm -hmm. they can receive a very nice uh, plaque. And how do they get that? They have to call historic. the State Historic Preservation Office which is also called SHAPO. Is that in Hartford? That is in Hartford. Okay. Uh, it's on the internet mm -hmm. under Connecticut State Historic Preservation mm -hmm. Office. And they can, it's a, it's a reasonable cost, uh, and it's a plaque that says, you know, National Register mm -hmm. of Historic Places. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it has the, the Charter Oak on it, so it's, it's very attractive. The Historic mm -hmm. District Commission here, the Norwich Historic District Commission, also gives plaques as awards to homeowners that have done a great job of uh, fixing up and maintaining their historic house. Mm -hmm. So you'll see those around the city and hopefully we'll have more as people you know, mm -hmm. reinvest mm -hmm. in their homes. So um, what upcoming tours do you have coming up in spring or during the summer? Well, <laughs> I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to do that. I probably will do some mm -hmm. uh, tours of the downtown area. Mm -hmm. um, the Walktober is coming up in October, and the planning is just starting for that. Mm -hmm. um, we might actually do something specifically related to World War I. Mm -hmm. you know, there's been so much attention to the Civil War that we've, we've kind of forgotten World War I, mm -hmm. which was very important. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, one thing might be to do a tour that specifically addressed mm -hmm. World War I, um, mm -hmm. as we certainly have many of... of uh, so I wanted to invite you to Lebanon. Maybe you could gather some people to do a tour there. Oh, Lebanon. Well, that, that would be, be nice, wouldn't yes, it? The, uh, the faith, the Trumbull House, the Governor Jonathan right. Trumbull House in Lebanon, yes. and take a tour around the Green and sure, and see the War Office and exactly. There's a lot there. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it, to do that maybe sometime? Sure. In Lebanon, of course, when when Trumbull was the governor, it was very important during the mm -hmm. American Revolution. You know, mm -hmm. Trumbull, I think, was the was he the only governor that was still yeah, um, yes. governor when the revolution ended? Yes. And yeah. Of course, Washington called him Brother Jonathan. Didn't and he? the Wadsworth <laughs> Stables yes. was moved from Hartford, and George Washington supposedly left his horse in the stables oh. while he stayed there. Could be. Could um, be. They would come up. Uh, he would, can you imagine traveling by horse all the way from? you know, Washington, D.C. or Virginia. Oh, yes. I, I, and there's a plaque in uh, Greenville <coughs> where it says George Washington crossed the river there. Yes, that's right near the uh, Norwich Public Utilities yes. power uh, plant. Mm -hmm. That's right. There was a, a ford there, a shallow. And didn't he stay at the Leffingwell Inn also? No. No? No. He probably stayed at one of the Huntington houses. Okay. On uh, Huntington yeah. Lane. Uh, Lafayette, I think, stayed at Governor Jonathan Trumbull House. I'm not, I mean, you know, it could be. Uh, no, yeah. the, 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 the guide to that, and that mm -hmm. is very accurate, is uh, Francis Crowfoot's Guide to the Historic Sites of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. It's a multi-volume set, uh, quite well researched, and she talks about many of these things. But no, Washington did not stop at the Leffingwell house or, uh, in fact, there's a letter from Christopher Leffingwell saying that he'd love to meet with, with Washington or see him, but he was too busy. Mm -hmm. See, Washington was coming through town with, with 5,000 men on his way to New York. And Leffingwell was going out trying to round up supplies for these mm -hmm. men. 
a more important thing than glad handing George Washington and, and so on, mm -hmm. because he was actually doing his job as a deputy commissary. Mm -hmm. um, armies, what do they say? Armies travel on their stomach. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have to keep the men fed so they have the strength to march and fight and, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, and that small war office was the first war office. Um, and in it's the amazing country. when you think that that the uh, uh, the Pentagon, what the Pentagon is now, the the Connecticut war effort was really run out of that very small building. I mean, mm. it's tiny. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, in New London, the Shaw Mansion was the naval headquarters for Connecticut. Mm. Um, There's an interesting story uh, when when you come to take a tour of the governor. Jonathan Trumbull House, um, the children were playing upstairs and the son was playing with his sister and he fell down the stairs and he was blinded in one eye. He hurt his eye. And he's the same person that when you go to Washington, D.C., the paintings in the rotunda, he's the same person that painted the paintings in the rotunda at the Capitol in Washington, D.C. I hope you get a chance to go to the Governor Jonathan Trumbull House um, to take a tour with Dale and the walks in Norwich and go to Lebanon. So uh, thank you, Dale, for joining sure. me today. Very interesting. And I wish you the best wishes in the future. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my show.